Coming down here for the first time, my initial reaction was my heart sank in a way because there were so many fish pooling down below the fish ladder and you could see the main stem of the Fraser and it was a raging torrent where you're like, there's no way fish are getting through there. When I went down right to the river and I saw the salmon crashing into the rocks, flopping back, trying again to make it, and there were thousands of salmon. I've been a biologist for a long time, but I've never come across conditions where so many salmon were working so hard to get past a spot and not making it. This part of the Fraser River is a really, really important place for salmon and a really, really important place for First Nations communities. Salmon have been fished here for thousands of years. It's a place that's culturally very important. And it's really one of the main arteries for salmon that are moving all the way up the Fraser past this point. One of the, the big issues is the Fraser River is so low. It's lower than it's ever been before at this time of year. And there's a fish ladder and the river's so low that the water's not even flowing through the fish ladder. So salmon are unable to use the fish ladder to get around the rapids. So they've been looking for another way to get through. The next few days, everyone teamed together to shuttle fish up and over the falls where they weren't getting past. And over two days, we moved about 7,000 sockeye and coho over the, over the passage. We worked on the upper part of the fish ladder to dig out a trench to get water flowing. We were able to get a helicopter in to shuttle massive sandbags and bulk bags and drop them into the, the pool below the fishway and build the water elevation up. And then it, eventually the spider excavator came in and started building a better channel for the fish to jump into pools and to pools and to pools and to create a better way up. This afternoon when I was standing on the site, I was actually able to watch salmon swimming pass right past my feet. And it was so satisfying to see that the thousands of salmon that were stuck now have a way through. This is a really serious and challenging problem. It's not one that anybody's got a handbook to say, when this happens, here's what you do. PSF reached out to a, a top-notch engineering firm and they came up with a plan. And then we worked with the local First Nations and DFO to agree to that plan. And then we helped fund the implementation. First Nations Fisheries Council has also put funds in and the Upper Fraser Fisheries Conservation Alliance is bringing forward funds. So together, along with Fisheries and Oceans Canada, all of these parties are putting funds into this. In addition to the funding, there's been a lot of leadership on solving this problem from two local First Nations, uh, Hoiston and Hacklip. Climate change is really adding a lot more pressure and difficulty for salmon. We're seeing drought, we're seeing fires, we're seeing floods that are outside the bounds of the normal variation that our salmon are adapted to. There's sometimes not a lot we can do about it. But when we have a situation like this, where there's thousands of salmon stuck in a place in the Fraser River, and we can get in there working with a lot of other partners and collaborators and do something about it, that's when we should. If you had been down there watching this, you would see that salmon never give up. They fight and fight and fight to get over these kinds of rapids and obstacles. And if salmon don't give up, we shouldn't give up on the salmon.